everyone. Welcome or welcome back to Fear Given and Rethemed. We are your hosts, Casey and Sean. For those of you that this is your first episode, we talk about haunted attractions, oddities, and pretty much all things horror. Yeah, so thanks for sticking with us because today we have another one. We are talking about the underground of Savannah. No, we're talking about the Savannah underground. (laughs) Close enough. (laughs) So the Savannah Underground is basically a, it's not a haunted house. No, it's a haunted it, attraction. It's a haunted attraction and it's very, very cool. And it, it it's not directly in Savannah. You have to go, well it is, but it's not like within walking distance of the city center. That's fair. Yeah. Right. So what is it, Sean? It <laughs> is an interactive experience that tells the dark history of Savannah. So on their website, this is what it says. Like nothing you've ever done before, the Savannah Underground is an attraction like no other. It's a new way to experience Savannah's dark and terrifying past as three creepy true tales play out around you in a 360 degree set. This is not your average Savannah ghost tour. This is one of the scariest things to do in historic Savannah. Yes. And before we go much further, they do have two different options, um, just so that we can give kind of our take on which option we chose. So they have um, where you can just go to the the show. It's a 45-minute interactive show, just like it kind of talks about. You have the 360-degree set, um, and it's, it's all one big room in a warehouse that they utilize for this kind of immersive storytelling. So if you only want to do that, great. You can meet them there. They have parking right outside of the warehouse. Um, But what we chose to do was they picked us up a little closer to where we were staying our first time. And we got to ride the trolley for about 45 minutes, which Mm -hmm. gave a little bit of a, not a recap, but an introduction. Like an introduction to what they were going to be Yeah, so they told us a little bit about the, um, the stories, the folklore, drove around the city a little bit pointed out specific locations that would come in handy when they were going through the actual um, theatrical storytelling part of it where we were involved. Yeah, it was really cool. I really actually enjoyed the trolley. I'm glad that we did the trolley tour first Mm -hmm. um, just because I like a longer experience. Yeah, you got to build that rapport with the the guides or the hosts. Mm -hmm. Get to meet cool people. Get to meet really cool people, yeah. I actually met somebody who worked at Disney. We met a few of them. Yeah. It wasn't like two or three Isn't that of them. Crazy. Yeah, small, small world. Yeah, and the price really wasn't terrible. No. Um. So typically for like a ghost and gravestones tour, it's about thirty to forty dollars depending mm-hmm. on the um the night. So the prices for this experience really weren't they weren't that crazy. Mm-hmm. Even adding the trolley on, um, which definitely comes at a little higher of a cost. It was well worth the hour and a half plus experience that you got to have. And you got to ask Mm -hmm. a bunch of questions. Um, You got to take pictures at the end. Mm -hmm. It was really, really neat. Yeah, I liked talking to the tour guides because they were like, not mediums, but they were just like... One was was, a self-proclaimed medium. Yeah. What was it, Maeve? Even though that's not really her real name. that was her show name. (laughs) Her real name was Madison? Madison, yeah. Tim's... Yeah, I was going to share the story, but you kind of jumped the gun on um, on that. <laughs> of which story? I was just going to talk about the team behind the terror. Oh, and, well, go ahead. Okay. So on their website, they're about us. It says, the Savannah Underground offers much more than your average haunted ghost tour. It is run by us, a team of Savannah natives who aim to scare and entertain visitors while simultaneously providing the unsavory history of our beloved city in a brand new way. By making the ghoulish stories that haunt our city come to life right before your eyes. In mid-2020, in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, John Taylor Timmons wrote the Savannah Underground while he was self-isolating at home with wife Madison Timmons. Together with John Taylor's brother and co-owner Kiwan Drayton, I hope I'm saying that right, they built a dream team of Savannah's most talented artists to bring you the Savannah Underground. After experiencing the London Dungeon when he was young, John Taylor knew he wanted to create an experience that was just as immersive. Over a decade later, the Savannah Underground team built a five-star experience that broke boundaries in the hostess city and disrupted 
the predictable. So they have a really cool um, uh, group of people. They're very talented. Mm -hmm. They're actually, I just saw a post not too long ago. They're hiring. They're hiring. Yeah, for three different positions? Yeah, the three the three stories. The three different oh, yeah. stories. Mm -hmm. So what are, what's the first story? So the first story is um, yellow fever. And this, if you don't know the history of Savannah, yellow fever ran rapid through Savannah. And there's mm -hmm. so many different stories about this and different people. Um, but in this particular one, this is um, circa 1820, a young girl suffers from the brutal disease that ravaged Savannah, yellow fever. Um, you will assist Dr. Gaust in putting her out of her misery. This Do you remember this being a girl? No, this was okay. a guy. And even on their website, their photos show it as yeah. an so older maybe man that had yellow fever. We did go like in May. So, I mean, they might have Either way, I can't it. imagine it would have changed much of the storyline mm -mm. going from a girl to a, an older guy. No, but the older guy that did it was so good. He was phenomenal. He like it like legit looked like he was dying of yellow fever. <laughs> might have been. <laughs> <laughs> he did not look good. Oh, gosh. Maybe he wasn't <laughs> acting. Lord. Um, so, yeah. And yellow fever was apparently really rampant in much of the South, not just Savannah. Right. Yeah, because of, like, the mosquitoes and... Yeah. New um, Orleans. New Orleans, um, yeah. A lot of Louisiana, I think they suffered from it throughout the years. Mm -hmm. And I will say that this experience, you're not going to be sitting anywhere. You are standing the whole time. So, please mm -hmm. be aware of that when you... When you book it, um, yeah. you are going, and it's not like a lot of people. I guess it depends on the night. It I'm was not sure. about 30 people okay, yeah, when we so. went. And it's, it's very, very, it's interactive Very story interactive. Um, it's immersive. You are, whether you like it or not, part of the show. Mm -hmm. And they do have specific people that they will pick out and volunteer that mm -hmm. you can get a little more involved. I think both of us had a hand in that. We did, yeah. Um, but if you're looking to just be part of it without being singled out, mm -hmm. that's with among 30 people, they're only going to call about five people to do specific roles. Yeah. So and don't you feel can, like you're going to you know, be the center of attention. No, and you can volunteer for it. But yeah, they don't typically pull you out of your comfort zone and go, you're going to do it, no. and only you. But if they do, don't worry. You're, it's fine. Like, you're not going to get it's hurt. It's not or near as like big that. of a deal as you think. No, it really isn't. You're like minimal work. Yeah. <laughs> so the second um, one, which was very, <laughs> actually very weird to me. The second one was probably my favorite. Yeah. So circa 1894, this is the Boo Hag. Um, a low country ghoul, the hag is coming for you. Can you trap it before it's too late? <laughs> and the person that plays this is very, <laughs> very good. Yes. <laughs> so... I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it's very... Um, so, can you tell us what a boo hag is? I don't even know. Is it like a swamp type? Do you remember them saying it? Mm-hmm. Okay, what is it? So, I don't have the specific reference, but it says it in a lot of different places on Google. So, a boo hag is a mythical creature in the folklore of South Carolina's Gullah culture. Cul culture? Gullah. <laughs> Gula culture, G U L L A H. Gula culture. <laughs> <laughs> it is a regionalized version of the hag myth. According to the legend, boo hags are similar to vampires. Oh. Unlike vampires, they gain sustenance from a person's breath as opposed to their blood. Ew. By riding their victims. I, wait, what? <laughs> so, I couldn't get a clear definition on what writing their victims meant all but i can think about is like something i imagine an alligator like, or something i pictured a kid riding on krampus's back oh that's terrifying so basically what it is because i <laughs> i honed in on this for this podcast and did a deep dive on, <laughs> on <boot> hags <laughs> okay so with vampires typically I'm going to speak on this like all of these things are real just because it's easier. Okay. So vampires suck your blood. Presumably you, I want to suck your blood. you die afterwards because you can't No, you're live. immortal. Well, 
if you if a vampire bites you and sucks your blood, you die. If they just bite you, then some of their or blood or their bite gets into you. Mm. Tracking with me? Yeah. So a boo hag, the way they, because they live off of people's breath while they're sleeping, they a- are able to keep their victims alive so that they can continuously come back night after night. Oh. So sleep paralysis is tied allegedly to hags. So like oh, okay. when you have sleep paralysis, you yes. see like shadow creatures, you see hags. I remember them. This is all kind this. of tied into that. So it's almost like sleep paralysis came and then boo hags was almost like a, yeah, I think I've seen something like that. So now they're both linked together. That's so <clears throat> scary. So the, the thought process is people that have sleep paralysis, they have that because the boo hag is taking their breath and they're kind of like. Do you feel like a boo hag is taking your breath in the middle of the night? Sometimes. Sometimes I can even hear the boo hag snoring next <laughs> to me. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, butthead. So that was really neat. Do you, would you like a bit of trivia? Yeah. You want to answer trivia? Yeah, right. let's go. How do you distract a boo hag? Like a boo hag is in your room, you're sleeping. What can you lay out? That will distract them from coming to you. Oh. Um, an object. A food. Um, or an object that... You're right on an object. Okay. Like to distract them. Mm-hmm. An object. What type of object? I remember them doing this in the You have experience. a few different options. And one of them... So because we were even more part of the show... A brush. A brush. Okay. Do you remember what else? In a broom. Brush in a broom. Yep. Do you remember why? Because the broom is like a protection. Maybe. Mm, Maybe, but. They like to brush their boo hag hair. No. So they like things with multiple bristles. Oh, yes. Because they like to count. Oh, yeah. (laughs) It was kind of a stretch when they started talking about it. But as a whole, you either place a broom beside your bed or place so a, the a bristle brush next to your bed. And the thought behind it is the boo hag will see that and they'll go, Ooh, I have to count every single bristle. Cause they have, so ADD. they waste all night <laughs> counting these bristles. And then when the sun comes up, Stupid. they can't survive. They live in the shadows. They live in the dark. So you have protected yourself by essentially giving them a task, a task to do. Oh, wow. So imagine... You better get like a really thick this brush. This going to sound awful, but I'll say it anyways. Okay. So I imagine if you wanted to get... If Rain Man was a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> if Rain Man was a vampire and he came in my room, Dustin Hoffman, <laughs> full on, and I was like, I'm, I'm sleeping, but I know Rain Man is next door. He's going to come in here. He's going to murder me. He's going to suck my blood. All you have to do is lay out something for him to count and he'll i mean rain man might count it quicker than the average boo uh, hag but yeah probably <laughs> you know that's, that's what so i funny. imagine is people that enjoy counting you me yep i'm one of them give you a task give me a task and i will stay up all night yep <laughs> ain't that the truth so that is that is it's all i've got for that one but boo hag that was um that was probably my favorite part of the show yeah, it's very interesting. The experience. It's very, um, yeah, it'll stick with you for sure. Yes. Um, right, now, my favorite third story. My favorite story was the Demon House. And this is circa 1963. And you'll meet Mary, a teenage girl who was the subject of Savannah's only confirmed exorcism. Mm-hmm. Now, this show is really cool because you are actually going to be witnessing not a legit exorcism but kind of what it would be like yeah, if depiction. you were you know in an exorcism the whole like um throwing holy water and yep you had all, everybody had their own tiny little bottle yeah. of holy water to throw yeah and <laughs> <laughs> the actress is so good i mean she's like she may or may I, not have also been our tour guide on the bus <laughs> and changed very quickly yeah she, yeah she's good <laughs> um but 
No, it's just, it's very cool. Yes. And you'll get scared. It's very intense. It is very intense. Because um, she so. is not the only character in that scene. No, I won't spoil it, but it's scary. Yeah, it was, um, if I had to compare it to one of our previous episodes, it was kind of a cross between The Collector and Darkest Deal of mm. Halloween Horror Nights yeah. and Exorcist Believer. Yeah. It was like you were right in the middle of those two stories. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's really cool. To, I mean, I like that sort of stuff. Like, I like to be surrounded. Yes, it was very intense because you... Which is crazy to me because I have anxiety and, like, I don't like being overstimulated and overwhelmed. But, like, in certain... But this was... But in those circumstances, This is almost like, like a tribulation house sort of scene, too. Yeah, it actually is, kind of. Um, and you're... Because it's a 360-degree set, you're not watching it play out on a stage. You are in the room... You are next to the possessed girl and the other characters. Yeah. Um, they are moving in and out of the shadows around you. So you're not really at a point where you can just back up against a wall and be safe. Mm-hmm. You're right in the middle of the room. Yeah. You can't go <laughs> so, run and hide. So. Um, do you remember? I have another trivia question for you. Okay. Do you remember the name of the house... Of the actual demon house. I would not have remembered this, so no. Oh my gosh. No, no I don't remember it, but I remember passing it on our tour. Yes. And I tried to do is a deep dive on this one as well to see if Mary was actually the name of the girl. And I don't. Is it the house with the thing that they put in the window? No, I think it's I a different remember. house. There. Guys, Savannah is so haunted and they have so many different houses. So from a brief uh, search on this, it was hard to distinguish whether when they say it was the only confirmed exorcism in Savannah, it was hard to decipher whether they meant an exorcism of a person mm-hmm. versus the exorcism of the house. I Everything you. I read, it looked like it pointed to it was the exorcism of the, the building or of the house, not okay. of a person. That makes more sense. It does. It kind of throws a wrench in the whole Savannah Underground storyline. It kind of does, yeah. But um, they either way, it was the, I believe, from what I read, this was based on the Hampton Lillibridge House. Ah, uh, okay. I do remember that name. Yeah. And a lot of history in that house. So there mm-hmm. were people that died. There were mysterious deaths. Um, and I believe one of the more recent owners, they are the ones that called and was like, hey, we can we do a cleansing and exorcism of this? And yeah. I guess got in touch and it was confirmed hmm. that they could. Wow. Um, another trivia question. Do you remember what color is used to ward off or confuse spirits that is Ooh. really common in Savannah? Oh, that's a good trivia question. I talked about it. I believe Nana has a, not a wagon wheel, but like a, the big like wooden spools. Okay. She has a wooden spool that is painted this color. I don't know if she realizes the significance of it or not. What? But okay, so a color that they is use. Is most commonly used to ward off or confuse spirits. And extra points, if you can be specific, not just the basic color, but the specific name of the color and why. Oh, God. Um, I don't know. What do you think the basic color is? Just the... Yellow? I don't know. It's blue. Okay. I was thinking either that or yellow. Okay. Any other guesses? So it was haint blue? Haint? H-A-I-N-T. Haint okay. blue. Okay. I don't remember. I may be saying that wrong, but meh. Haint? Haint? Haint blue? Who knows? Um, so a lot of houses would be painted this color um, in Savannah's history and really throughout more than just savannah but Mm -hmm. um they talk about it specifically here in relation to boo hags and other evil spirits because Mm -hmm. it resembles water and allegedly spirits are unable to cross water so seeing that blue they would see it and they would think oh that's water i can't cross that yeah and they wouldn't a lot of them would just kind of turn away oh that's great so yeah i didn't know that they talked about it I want to say on the trolley, but they didn't spend a lot of time on it. And okay. I couldn't understand I what that. they were saying before blue. 
I think they also talked about it in the Sorrel Weed House. Sorrel Weed House. Sorrel Weed House. I don't know how to say it. Sorrel or Sorrel? I have no idea. We'll figure that out before we do the episode, but... Yeah, um, because we also did a... We didn't do an investigation there. We just did a ghost tour. Right, but we want to do an investigation Uh, there. Yeah, that would be really... Because it's very intimate. Yes. Yeah. So, Um, um, the last thing that I wanted to mention um, before we end this episode is... There is a Savannah Underground podcast called The Most Haunted City on Earth, um, and we'll link that in the show notes as well. Um, It's with the owners. They um, talk about a lot of haunted things in Savannah, and um, they're pretty cool to listen to. They're very interesting. Um, I've I've listened to a few of their episodes, and so I just wanted to shout them out and um, have you go follow them and listen to their podcast as well. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely check this place out and you go to Savannah. You won't be disappointed, I promise. Yes, it's well worth the cost. Yeah, it is. Um, So, yeah, thanks for listening. Make sure to like, subscribe, and check out our um, next episode when it comes out. Thank you. Bye. Bye.